All right, YouTubers. I had a really interesting comment on my camshaft agreeing video. Machinery repairman replied to my video saying that I couldn't find true top dead center using my dial indicator that you have to use the piston stop or positive stop method. I'm intrigued by his statement that I can't find a true top dead center with the dial indicator. Um, right now, the engine is still set up exactly how it was when I made the cam degree or camshaft video. I want to find out how far off it could be because that's, that's important. I mean, you know, when you're degreeing a cam, one to two degrees makes a big difference. As this thing sets right now, it's exactly how it was in the video yesterday. I haven't moved the degree wheel, loosened the nut, changed anything about it. So what I'm gonna do first is move the magnetic base and my measuring device back over to where it's set up on the piston. Okay guys, I had to do a little wrestling with my dial indicator setup. I got her where I need it to be. So I've got the, what I want to do is verify that I've got this degree wheel pointing directly at zero. This thing is zeroed. Okay, you can check the accuracy of your degree wheel with the dial indicator on the piston by splitting the difference the same way you would with a with a positive stop same way you would on when you're finding the apex of your cam lobe go down to 50 thousandths down look at your degree wheel because if you're off Remember, I was at 12 and a half the other way, and I'm at 13 this way. That means you take that half a degree and you divide it by two. So basically, there is some truth to what machinery repairman was saying because the split the difference method that you use with a positive stop is going to be more accurate we're talking about a quarter of a degree like i'm only off a quarter of a degree because what you would do at this point is if you took and you had 13 here and you had 12 and a half the other way you would literally just bump this thing like a quarter you know like that's probably that much so now if we go and re re redo our measurement, go to our 50,000 should be, what, 12 and a quarter? 11, 12, that's about 12 and a half maybe a hair more. So let's see if I went the right way or the wrong way. Hey, this is pretty cool. We're learning something. I like new techniques and ways to do things a little more accurate. Boom. Okay. So I'm literally at, I mean, you could argue it's 12.75 because I'm literally just closer to the 13 mark than I am to 12 and a half. If that makes any, I mean, think about it. I'm looking at a piece of bent wire at a little tiny little mark on here. 11, 12, it's, it's slightly more than 12 and a half, but not quite 13. This is so interesting to me. Or as close to dead zero as I can, lining up a piece of bent metal and a zero 
let's just run through it one more time. All right, we're going to be down the cylinder. It's hard to get this thing to move. When you get it this close, it's like trying to, there we go, dead down. And that is 12 and 3 quarters, we could call it. So now we'll go back up to TDC. We're right on the line, then we're coming back down. So now we're down again, 50 thousandths. One, two, 12 and 3 quarters. Okay. So, I mean, I'm not down, I'm not knocking anybody. I really am appreciative that I found another way to validate true top dead center. Now, I'm, and you know, if we're talking a quarter, could have easily been a half, but if you're not absolutely confident, do it over and over again. The more you run through this process, the easier it's going to come to you because Clearly, I was within a quarter of a degree of being at an absolute true top dead center when I used my dial indicator method for finding top dead center on the piston. But keep just keep in mind, there is validity. That is a real tangible parameter that you have to know how to work around is that you have a dwell period where your piston hits top dead center, as the connecting rod crosses over the center line of the crank, it sits still, and then it starts coming back down. So that, that's really good, I appreciate that. I just wanted to run through that process. I did want to validate there was a small difference between the split and the, you know, I'm gonna call it the positive stop method for finding your top dead center. And I just wanted to show everybody on video that I did take the time to check the way I had it set up and it, it actually was a quarter of a degree off and I you know keep in mind I don't have the big pro wheel maybe we would have been able to see exactly what was going on if I had that larger uh, pro wheel because a lot of people don't realize the larger your degree wheel the more accurate your measurements are so Anyway, that's just the little comp cams degree wheel. Um, I was off a quarter of a degree. I now have it exactly, and I'm going to run through the uh, cam intake center line one more time and just see if I get a different answer. Okay, okay, guys, I moved the dial indicator back over to the lifter. We're setting it true top dead center. Let's start moving the engine. We're going up the cam. Ooh, we slowed down. We'll zero our indicator, and then we will verify. Boom. It dro if I go any at all counterclockwise, it drops. Goes back up to max lift. Goes back down. Right there is the apex of our cam lobe. So what we're going to do, is we're going to do our backup. Remember, we're going counterclockwise, so anytime we go back in the normal rotation of the engine, we take up the slop or the slack in the timing chain, and we will get a reading at 50 thousandths on the up ramp. Oh, it didn't move too far, and we're going to try to get this as accurately as possible. 50 thousandths, so we're looking at see we'll call that you know if we're gonna cut hairs I could almost call that a 66 and a quarter because it's not a true 66 and a half so I mean you know with this little degree wheel we're doing the best we can because I could easily say 66 and a half but I'm gonna fudge it closer to 66 and a quarter now we'll go back up to the apex of our lobe. Boom, see how it sits there? Keep going, come straight back down. That's 
really good reading. Then we will come down to the 50 thousandths on the other side of the lobe. 148. Man, you could almost say 148 and a half. It's literally how you hold your head when you're looking at this stupid thing on what you're, you know, I'm gonna, I'll just call that 148 and a half. So we'll basically add together 148 and a half and 66 and a quarter and just see what it says. Okay, so the 148 and a half plus 66 and a quarter divided by two is like a 107.37. So we're now, you know, back closer to that original 107.5 intake center line that I got the first couple of times I measured it. And then I reset everything and I re ran the numbers and came out with a 108 even. So right now I'm gonna run through these numbers. I'm gonna run through and measure it at least two more times and if I keep getting a, a consistent measurement, then I'll know what I need to do to, to get, correct the intake center line. Okay, I just ran the numbers again, and I decided, depending on how I held my head, that I was really looking at 66 and a half and 148 and a half. So, you know, that's, you know, I've run that number three times now. And I'm getting 66 and a half plus 148 and a half, and then you divide them by two, gives you 107.5 intake center line, which is totally ironic because the very first time I measured this cam, I got a 107.5 intake center line, but it was so far off of the 110 that I was expecting to see or hoping to see. I went and reset everything. I redid my top dead center, redid my degree wheel, was getting consistent 108 intake center line readings. Then I went and, and verified that I had the true TDC off by a quarter of a degree, you know, rect restored or corrected that issue, got everything as dead on as I can possibly get it with my eyes and was coming out with a 107.375. What was it? 107.375. But after you go through the numbers two or three times, and you, like I said, when you're using this size degree wheel and you're literally looking at it with a piece of bent wire, how you hold your head and hold your tongue plays a lot with what number you end up getting. So I settled in on 148 and a half and 66 and a half. I got that measurement consistently four times in a row. That's 107.5 intake center line, guys. The cam needs to be retarded, probably a good two degrees. Because like I said, if you're half, degree, half of a degree or less, you can't really, you know, maybe if you bought one of them high dollar hex adjusts, you might be able to fidget in and get it exactly perfect. But in the normal world, where you're using offset bushings, keyways, yada, 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 you know, if you're within a half a degree, you're, you're good to go. You can run. We did verify that there is a difference between the uh, using the positive stop method and the degree or the dial indicator method after watching the My Vintage Iron or whatever that uh, engine assembly guy. Uh, he was showing that you can use your dial indicator to actually work as the positive stop to validate true, do true top dead center. So, Anyway, that was a really interesting comment. Um, I am very appreciative because I learned something new today that I probably should have known my whole life. So, I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully this helps everybody out. Um, I'm going to make another video where I talk about some information in the simplest form possible when it comes to degree and cam so that everyone can learn to do it. So thanks again for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, hit the little bell. Um, I appreciate all you guys' help and all of your support. Thank you.